Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So, you know, just remember that as you're creating, as you're creating, there's going to be uh, there's going to be different stages of each creation, you know, different stages of each creation, and, and each current reality is not separate from that creation. Okay, each current reality is not separate; they're connected. Structure is connected. The end result and the current result are connected. They're not these separate things. They're one thing. When you go into the end result, you say. I want to have this beautiful painting. Where is it now? You know, I want to have this end result, but what's it like now? And then what's it like now? And then what's it like now? And then what's it like now? All you're doing is noticing what it is as you're building it. It's like, you know, maybe a good example is the end result is this finished automobile, this finished car. And, and every week you look at it, you go, well, now I've got four wheels and a, and a chassis. Well, now I've got a motor. Well, now I've got some seats. Well, now I've got this. You see what I'm saying? So it's it's one thing that you're creating. A lot of times people see I'm broke and I'm rich as separate. They're the same. They're the same creation, your creation of financial freedom. Just because you're building the car and all of a sudden you try to uh, put the motor together and it blows up on you and you've actually gone backwards, backwards, and now you get to create a better motor, a better engine. You see, it's still moving. It's still going. Does that make sense? It's still going. That's right. Hiking's a great example. You might think, oh, I'm on this mountaintop. I'm going to go to that mountaintop. Has anyone been hiking? And as you're looking up, it looks like you're going to get there way sooner. And then you get up there and there's actually a huge valley and a huge dip. Has that ever happened to you guys where you're hiking? You're like, oh, look, it's just there. It looks really close. And as you get up, then you're like, oh, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, you, I got to go all the way down there now. That, that's not what I thought, you know, last week. You see? That's not what I thought last week. So, you know, that's interesting because as we're creating, we go, oh, well, last, last week I was here and now I'm further away. That's not how it looked before. True. And so it's very important to understand that each current reality, you know, the third step, step one, what is my end result? Step, step two, you know, feel it. Step three, you know, where am I now compared to that? Okay. It's just understanding that there's this end result that's pulling you towards it. And you don't know how far or how long it's going to take to get there. And you don't really mind. You're just enjoying the journey. You just, you go in towards it, you know, and you just keep observing where you are and noticing if there's anything in the way, taking the action and enjoying it, you know. And one of the things that I got taught in business was, you know, Chris, your business will never be this size again. So enjoy it, you know. It will, it will never be, you know, it will never be this size again, enjoy it. Your kid will never be this old again, enjoy it. You know, you'll never be starting out on a weight loss journey again. So enjoy it. You know, you'll never get to experience what it is you're experiencing now. So enjoy it. Enjoy all the different flavors, you know, enjoy it. Just enjoy, be enjoy. And it's, uh, it, it's so, so, so good. It's so good. Stay in that end result. Remember, have a magnetic focus. Your focus is what's magnetic. So today we're going to talk about uh, today. Do we have some new people on the call? Do we have some new some new recruits? Who's new? Is this your first? Is anyone here their first live session? Dean 5.0 is new. Hey, Carrie, nice to have you. Welcome to your first session. Have you done the intro uh, section? Uh, in the great to have you here there's a great introductory i think it's about four hours uh in the in the back office there's so much support here so just know it can be overwhelming when you first start because we've just got so many classes going and so many things hey bill welcome 
So this is my one. I do this every week. I don't think I've missed this session this week for, for about six months. This is, this is my session. And then uh, all the other sessions are done by our beautiful, beautiful top coaches. So yeah, it can be overwhelming at the beginning, but just reach out. You know, we've got 28 staff in conscious education. So there's all, there's a lot of people that can jump on the phone and talk you through where to find things or give you logins or whatever. So we're all here. And then there's a huge group of uh, certified coaches and everyone else. So just ask. Great to have you all. Great to have you all here. So we're going to talk about uh, identity. Identity. Now, we all know that our identity is created in the individuation process in our first years of life. Okay. And we all know that our identity is necessary as our uh, self-conscious egoic vehicle to navigate this human existence. So we know that it's necessary. Yeah, we know that it's necessary. And it's very important to, to realize that it is necessary. We have to have this. Yet this identity, because of its nature of its limitation, creates a oscillating structure because it bases its, its life on the problem. And uh, it's very easy for us to see this oscillation, okay? So let's say that we have a identity, a current reality, a desired reality, and we have uh, an identity in the current reality and an identity in the future reality. So if this identity here uh, lives in, uh, in a world of being in scarcity or not enough, Okay, what it decides is that's how it is. Okay, that's how it is. Oh, hey, let me just say, I just seen um, someone typed in to all panelists. If you'd like to communicate with the group, you need a ticket to all panelists and attendees. I can see Dean's just typing into just me. Uh, Sean's typing into just me. So you can, you can change it and everyone else can see it. Okay, so you have an identity in your current reality. And so let's say your current reality is, is maybe, you know, you don't have an, uh, as much money as you want. So we'll, we'll just say less uh, financial freedom uh, than you desire. Okay, so that's a, that's a current reality. I've experienced that current reality most of my life less financial freedom uh, that, than I desire. And so my identity was that, that it's scarcity, like it's not enough. Now what happens is this identity actually becomes true. So it says, hey, you know, this is how it is. This is how life is. This is how you grew up. So this becomes true. And this becomes like a, uh, a stake in the ground, right? So this, this locks in to the ground, okay? And so here you are in the middle and you, you want to go to a desired reality where you have financial freedom and you have more, more money than you can spend, than you can spend. Okay, and you're like, wow, that's going to be so cool. And so then this identity has the identity of abundance, okay? And instead of not enough, this one is enough. And so what, what happens is you, you can never have this because if you were to have this, and this becomes a, a stake in the ground, you can never have this because in order to have it, your identity would have to give up it would have to give up its view of the world and how it is. And so it's like you have two uh, elastical rubber bands around you like this. And so as soon as you move a little bit towards financial freedom, then this one pulls you back, okay? And what happens is you just move in this, this circular pattern here in the middle and it all becomes down to your identity. See, in order for it to flow in that direction, there must be no identity resistance, okay? So what we must do is we must go into this future identity, whatever it is, and we must feel it and bring it into the now. 
okay so we go into the future and we align ourselves with the identity of 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 who it is that would have it and then we get ourselves to be allowed to experience that now and what this means is it means that there's no resistance on an identity level to having it there's no resistance on an identity level to having it and that's what we're going to discuss and we're going to do a recode on because you must become it and then you see it you must be it to see it become it so it comes to be be it to see it and that's what we must align with now there's no problem solving here because there's nothing wrong with either of these realities right we're stepping into a creation and then allowing ourselves to become that now this is creation not problem solving see i see uh, i see this this here this forwards and back this oscillation uh, a lot it, it's um it's really interesting see one way that i see it is when there is uh, a cognitive dissonance or um there is uh, beliefs that that really fight each other okay so so how, how about this how about this for a a quandary so so on this here we have not enough money so we would like to not enough and because we don't have enough we would like to go over here where we have enough And so to do that, we want to go and earn money. But also in here, we have a belief that money is bad. Anyone know anyone that has an not enough money, but also a belief that money is bad? They have this weird desire to have more over here, to have enough. But then they have a weird other belief that there's something wrong with having enough. Right? So what happens is they move towards, they move towards going to have enough. But then as soon as they move towards it, the money is bad belief pulls them down over here. So then what happens is there's a second structure here that they then move towards, which is um, give it away. So then they move towards giving it all away and then they move back to not enough again. So you see that? So they have not enough, they move to having enough, but they have a belief structure around their identity. Well, having money must be bad or instead of bad, it's wrong. So this pulls you back to that. So then you go, well, uh, I've got it, but I've now got this belief. So now I've got to give it all away, but I give it all away, which ends up having not enough. Give me a yes if you've seen this crazy situation, you know, happen in, in more than one way in your life. You know? And so, so then the only obvious action is, is we think to ourselves, oh, well, I need to go and fix this belief. I need to believe that money is good and I need to go and fix this. So then we create a different structure over here and we say, well, okay, I'll go and fix this. But as soon as we want to go and fix it, okay, all we're doing is then telling ourselves that we now have something that we need to fix. And what's the instruction when we need to go and fix something is that I can't, have what I want. And so we fix it. So now we feel like money's good and we get back in the same structure. But now we've replaced money is bad with I can't have what I want the way I am. So then we get in another loop. We go here to here to here to fix. And we just go in this cycle. We go in this cycle. And how many of you have seen this cycle? The cycle's crazy. It's crazy. This is the problem solving cycle. And we see it in society right now. Do you guys realize how ridiculous it is uh, that all they're talking about is self isolate and masks? 
Do you realize how ridiculous that is? Here's the ridiculous part of it. The ridiculous part of it is nowhere in any of their conversation are they talking about actually creating healthy bodies. They're never talking about let's create healthy bodies. They're not saying, how do we create a society of healthy bodies? I don't know the science behind masks and, and all the things, but here's the one thing I do know is if they were really truly in the end result of having a, a healthy society, they would be 100% focused if all these people are in isolation or whatever, why wouldn't we spend all the money on everyone getting the best vitamins and the best sunlight and the best food? Why the best water? If they were really, you can see the it, you can see the problem reality. Does this make sense, guys? You can see the problem reality. It's the world, unfortunately, we live in. They only see the problem and they want to then solve the problem. Oh, here we go. We'll just stand further apart from each other, right? We'll put masks on, but you can still go have fast food and we're going to stop you getting in sunlight and stop you walking around, but we're going to solve the mask problem, you see? And, and, and this isn't just, uh, the, and that's just a good example. And so it's just a good example where, as a society, we're not in creation. Because if we really stood in creation, we'd say, okay, all right, so there's this, there's this, there's this virus that's here. All right, so what do we need? There's not a single doctor on the planet that says uh, that you shouldn't have an increased immune system. So what we should have all done, oh, there's this virus coming along. Everyone should have gone, right, we need to increase vitamin C and X, all these things to increase our immune system. Who agrees with that, right? For, it should have been the first thing. I mean, it's this, uh, you know, it's not, if they were in the, if they were in creation, that should have been the first thing, then, you know, we're not gonna get into debates about everything else, but I'm just suggesting that we can simply see that we're living in a problem solving world. Okay. We don't need to get into agendas or anything else. We can just simply agree that we live in a problem solving world. You know, they say, oh, there's a, you know, we're going to fight drugs. We're going to fight terror. We're going to fight that. We're going to attack uh, obesity. We're going to attack. Can you guys sense how much fight and attack there is? It's, it's the whole world is focused on what they don't want and going for it. So it's very, it's very difficult for most of us to get out of that worldview, okay? We're fighting the world. We're fighting the countries next to us. We're fighting the planet. We're fighting a natural occurring thing called global warming. We're fighting, we're fighting, fighting, fighting. Everything's a problem. You see, and so the the idea of we've got to fight everything, including ourselves, including ourselves. See, we're fighting ourselves too. I'm not. I've got to fix this about me. I've got to fight that. My body's fighting me because I'm showing a symptom of a cancer. It's against me. The whole worldview is that we are something here, and everything else is here. You see, we are, we are living in a problem solving reality that when I talk about creation, sometimes people's identities say, well, how would I be motivated? How would I be motivated if there was nothing to solve? If I was just happy now, what would life be about? We're so caught in this, you know, we need bigger computers and faster cars and we always are solving for a problem we're always solving for a problem we're always solving for it and the truth is is it's an addiction it's an addiction everywhere i see addicted people walking around looking for problems that they need to solve not creating what they really want not creating what they really want not asking themselves, what would we love to create and what needs to happen for that? 
there's not a single person that wouldn't agree that we would love to create a more happy, harmonious world. There isn't a single person that wouldn't would disagree and say that uh, we we all agree at these fundamental levels. We'd like to uh, we'd like to to create, but we're just we're bred into seeing problems. We're bred into not having enoughness and needing to get all of these things and. and and really trying trying our best to solve problems but by giving them all the power when you give the problem the power you're telling all aspects of you that the problem is important as soon as you observe the problem you create it as soon as you act towards solving the problem you make it stronger because the highest form of information is behavior what would it be like to finally accept that life is just perfect right now and ask yourself, even though it's perfect, what would I love to create? What would I love to create just because I'd love it? But life's already perfect. It's already great. What would I just love to create? We're in a, we're in a beautiful, beautiful structure right now. And uh, it's fascinating to be a creator inside of a, uh, reality focused on problems because it's like you you just live in a I live in a different reality you will live in a different reality you simply say this is what I want to create you put a hundred percent focus on what you want to create rather than 90 percent focus on what you don't want making that a reality do you do you guys will understand that when you put focus on something you energetically create it in the invisible you energetically make it. So, so what we do is we put, let's say 50%, we put 50% on what we don't want. So now that's a, that's a reality. And then we put 50% on what we do want, right? And we sit there going, well, I don't want this and I do want this. And we sit and we get taught to do this. They both exist, <laughs> you know, they both exist. We just made them all manifest. And, 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 and I really mean that because as soon as you think about it, as soon as you think about it, your neurons rewire, which is the first time that that thought actually gets wired into a reality. It's This isn't hocus pocus made up crap. When you think about the problem, neurons connect in your brain. It, you literally go from a thought to a thing. And the thing is two neurons connected. <laughs> it's not like it's this invisible thing hanging out there. The thought exists in your brain connected as two neurons going, this is what I don't want, a negative emotion. Here's the circumstance. And now they're connected together. And, and you can physically observe when someone creates that structure inside their brain. And then it's something that they then look for to try to avoid. And then they create it outside of themselves. It, it's literally the most, uh, you know, it's the most wasted, wasted uh, thing that we do. I'd love to at least try to get most of you to, to at least 70% focused on what you really want. You know, most of the time you should just be focused on what I, what I truly want. I read this really great book uh, about two years ago. Uh, I think it's called Mutant Messages Down Under. Mutant Messages uh, Down Under. Well, 70% would be a good goal, Tricia. Mutant Messages. Anyway, it's about this American lady, American journalist, I believe. And uh, she, she came over here to Australia and she went walkabout with, uh, uh, who else has read the book? Two people say they love their book. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great book. Regan, Sarah and Lindy. This, this American lady came to Australia and she went walkabout with the Aboriginals. And she went on this, this huge three month journey with no clothes, walking out in the Australian outback, got sunburned and just, just, just got, but absolutely survived just walking around in the middle of the desert with them. Um, mutant. Someone, someone will. Um, La Lana, you read it too. How many of you have read that book? Pamela's read it. Wow, I didn't know you guys all read this book. Yeah, Dermot's read it too. Long time ago. Yeah, 1992, I think it was released. Anyway, the book that I, the part of the book that I really loved the most, you know, obviously she does. They do amazing things out there. I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna think I'm about to sell about. 20 more copies than she's probably sold in the last month right now. Anyway, uh, it's a great book. Uh, I've never met the lady. I forget her name, by the way. And um, in it, they they talk about 
uh, yeah, there it is, uh, Marlo Morgan. You know, she, uh, it was really great. So they talk about how they decide uh, to become a different version of themselves. And so they basically, the, in the tribes, they say, hi, you know, this is my new name. And then this is what I do. So like, hi, I'm healer. I'm a healer now. Or hi, I'm a, you know, I'm a musician now. Or hi, I'm this. And they would tell them their name and then they'd do a dance and explain like how they're going to be. And then everyone would name them differently and they'd be something else. And they would learn using their super conscious how to become an amazing healer uh, or, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, amazing, amazing new skills that they would learn just by changing their identity. And I, and I really love that part of the book because, you know, we just keep one name our whole life, right? Like, oh, I'm Chris. I've always been Chris. And it was, it was so cool because they changed their name, they changed their identity, and then everyone named them that. Everyone observed them in that new reality. No one said, oh, you've never done that before. You can't be a musician now. You've always been this. They just, they just named it. Do you, who, who remembers that from the book, by the way? Lani says, yes, thanks for the reminder. Who remembers that part? Yeah, it was great. And so everyone, just no one said, oh, you can't do that. You know, no one said, you can't be a healer now. You can't be a doctor. You know, that's not you. They all said, right, that's you now. That's you now. And they just, uh, they decided, they did a dance. And then that was their new name. That was their new way. And, and I, it never left me. It never left me. I think I read the book about three, three years ago or something. And uh, it just never, it never left me that, you know, you just go, hey, this is me now. And when you become it, right? When you become it, that that's when, yeah, right on, Dixie. Yeah, it is. So when you become it, then there's new behaviors, there's new things that become with being that, you see? And so, so let me ask you, for your end results, who do you need to be? You know, who do you need to be? What's your identity? And I want to build your new identity. So in order for you to have it, you know, like some of you, how many of you need the identity of being a, you know, a, a world changing coach? You know, you guys see me as a world changing coach, but I wasn't born uh, into, into that identity. You see, a world class coach, whatever it is. How many of you want to have the identity of being rich? I do this with all my, my team around me. Whenever they say something, I go, well, I always say, well, you're rich. You're rich. You can go get that. You know, they, but you're rich. What would you do if you're, you're a rich person? I always, I always say that. And whenever, I, whenever I say, well, I'm rich, so I can handle that. And I started saying that I was rich, even when I wasn't. I was like, oh, well, I'm rich, so I can do that. And so it's, uh, it's, you know, what is that new identity? We need to have some identity. You need to have something that you need to have the new identity to orientate to the world. So my question is, is what, what new identity do you need to step into? That which, if you became that identity, the results that you desire are, are obvious. Say it again. If you became that, so I chose to be a healer. I remember telling my wife, I'm like, hey, I choose to be a healer. She's like, what, what do you mean you choose to be a healer? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to choose to be able to heal people using the quantum field. She was like, wow, that's interesting. And, and then I was like, I nearly signed up for a chiropractor course. <laughs> and, then, and then I met Colette like two months later. I was like, well, I choose that, you know. I choose it. It's how, it's how Colette manifests into my life. I chose it. I was like, oh, I'm going to be that. Stepped into it. I step into it. So I want to ask you that. What identity must you, uh, must you choose to be come right now that all your end results are just part of being that? Love it. Who do you choose to be? It's interesting. And you don't have to have just one. You don't just have to have one. So I want to talk to you about how to create a new identity. Does it sound good? So let's choose an end result. Let's choose an end result that we would really like to manifest. Okay, so let's choose one. So I'm working on my book at the moment. So I'll do it with you. So I, I'm, uh, I'm choosing to be a world, a world famous author. So 
that's what I'm choosing. I'm choosing to have a, well, sorry, my end result is I'm choosing to have uh, the number one selling personal development book in the world. That's my choice. Nice. Well, don't put limits on it, Alex. It could happen sooner. It could happen sooner. Just choose to have it. So I want you to have a choice. What is your choice? I've lost a, my pen. I was, I did have a pen earlier today because I was writing down the certification stuff. How annoying. All right, well, I'll just have to do it in my mind. Hmm. All right, so let's have a choice. Everyone um, write down a choice, okay? What is an end result you would like to create? I'm gonna do this with you. So my choice is to be a, uh, to, my choice is to have written the number one personal development, um, most revolutionary personal development book on the planet. That is my choice. All right. is a good choice. <laughs> Thanks, Ali. Cool. Okay, so now that you've got that uh, that choice, okay. Hey, Edwina. So now that you've got that choice, whichever one it is, now I want you to ask yourself, okay, who do I need to be? Who do I need to be? What would my identity be if that was easy? What would my identity need to be if that was easy? So Scott, my business partner in my marketing company, some of you guys know Scott, he goes to the gym every day easily. He loves the gym. Benches like 180, squats like four times his body weight or something, I don't know. He's amazing at the gym, but but he his identity he's a he's a he's a fitness person. It's his identity. It's not hard work. It's because it's who he is. You see, so what's the identity that you need to be? So I, I remember choosing to become a speaker, public speaker. I choose to be that, and because of that, speaking was easy because that's who I was. That's who I was. So who do you need to be? Who do you need to be? He is a legend, Edwina. He's a total legend. So who do you need to be? So let's let's define that. Has everyone defined it? Uh, yeah, just let's just choose one, Sharon. Let's just work on one. Yeah, yeah, cool. Let's just choose one. So who do you need to be to be that coach? And you know, who do I need to be to have that? Okay. So the first layer that we want to build out, can someone type this in? Is environment. So if you were to be that, who would you hang around? Environment. Who would you be around? So what sort of people, where would you live when you're that person? What, what place would you live in? Who would you uh, unconsciously be connected to, whether it's uh, physically or you know spiritually? What's the environment that you would live in? And, and just define it. It doesn't matter if it's the same or not. So who would you be around? Where would you live? What would be around you? What would your environment? Epigen epigenetics talks a lot about what you're surrounded by is very important. Yeah. So who would you be around? So for me, who would I be around? I, I'd be around, you know, if I was, so I, I am... I am world 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 famous author and I would be around oh, I would I would be around other authors I would be around I'd be around a really great editor who I hope has emailed me today I'd be around who would I be around I'd be around um, I'd be around my team yeah I would yeah, I'd be living, I'd be living in the same place. I wouldn't change. I'd be around you guys. I'd have a great tribe. In fact, I'd have, I'd have a tribe of, of people who've only bought my book, nothing else. So I'd have them, I'd have my certification people. I'd have, yeah, so I'd be around. Yeah. I can just see it. when I when I step into who I'd be around, I just see, I see all of you and then waves and waves. See, there's about 50 million people 
give or take. That's what I'd be around. So you really just, you know, step into what would you be around? What would be in the environment? Yeah. Okay, so the next level after environment, okay, is, uh, is behavior. Yeah. He might be around you, Anthony. Uh, so what is your behavior? Can someone type in behavior? So behavior is number two. Okay, number one is environment. Number two is behavior. So step into that identity and ask yourself, what would my, be my daily habits? Okay, what behaviors would I exhibit? What would be my daily habits and behaviors? If I was this person now, what would be my behaviors? What would my actions be daily, weekly, monthly? Like, what would I do? So if you were choosing to become, uh, so I am a healthy person, well, then uh, my behavior would be I'd go to the gym every day. You know? Oh, <laughs> got it, Anthony. Sorry, I just read it as it came in. So what would, uh, um, what would, what would you, uh, what would you do? What would your behaviors be? So when I tune into mine, let me tune into mine. Okay. So I am a world famous author, created the, the most revolutionary, best-selling, best-selling person development book of all time. Mm, behavior. I'd be on podcasts and radio shows. Behavior. I would be. I'd be signing books and sending them out with little love letters to everyone. I would be, I would be behavior. What would I, I'd be writing every day. I would be reading it. A behavior I'd be doing is I'll be reading it. There'll be an audio book with it. I'd be reading. I would be, um, I'd be doing talks with the book. I would, I'd, I'd be doing talks. The books would be behind me. I would, um, behavior. What would I be doing? I'm a world. I'm the world famous author, Chris Duncan. Hello, I'm Chris Duncan, the world famous author of the Superconscious Creators Code. I would, yeah, I'd be making, yeah, I'd be making lots of lots of decisions, lots of who do I talk to, podcasts, getting it out there, mm. be talking to a lot of people about it. Yeah, lots of emails. There'd be tons of emails, so I can see myself uh, talking to my staff about how to reply to all the emails. Yeah, that's my behavior. So what's the behavior? Okay, so you get into the behavior. How would it behave? And this is you now. We're going to align yourself to this. Okay, the next thing is capability. Okay, so capability, environment, behavior, capability. Capability means what new skills would you have? So if you were this, what new skills or what things could you do? So if you were um, choosing the end, choosing the identity of being a, uh, you know, an amazing, amazing magnetic mind coach, a capability you would have would be able to, I'd, I'd be able to take a group recode. Okay, so what new skills would you have? I would have the capability to, you know, if my new identity is to be um, a healer, I would have the cap capability when to, to, you know, nine times out of 10 shift someone's emotional state uh, to create healing. Uh, what capabilities would you have? So you'd have the ability to say, if you wanted to be a person who was a millionaire, my new identity is I'm a millionaire, maybe, is you would have the ability to save and invest money, maybe. Okay. Maybe you, so what abilities or skills do you need? Okay. When, when you're this person now, what abilities or skills would you need to have? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Super marketing skills. Yeah. The ability to lead people. Yeah. The ability to have confidence. Yeah. Yeah, so you just go into it. So you ask yourself, okay, so I am, I am this world famous, uh, world renowned author. I have the most, okay, I have that. You know, what skills would I need? Well, I would need PR skills. I would need, I would need, I don't know. I don't know what other skills I'd need. That's really it. I mean, maybe better writing skills. Maybe I'd have better writing skills. I would need, um, 
I've already written the book. It's just got to get edited. I would have, I would have more patience with editors. <laughs> I got this editor I talked to the other day and she's like, it's going to take, uh, she edited Anthony Robbins last book. And she's like, oh, well, it's going to take between four to six months. And I was like, four to six months. <laughs> What? <laughs> so I'm, I'm uh, interviewing another one. Um, but uh, <laughs> so what other skills would I have? You know, yeah, I brought, yeah, yeah. So what other, what other capabilities would you have? Strong listening to guidance. I love that. Uh, able to listen to the, the super conscious. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Cool. And make, yeah, cool. So some skills, good. Okay, so so uh, environment, behavior, capability. Okay, we're building we're building this identity. Okay, we're building it, and we're going to own this. We're going to become it. We're going to do what the uh, the the Aboriginal tribe done. We're going to say this is me now. Okay, so the next thing is uh, the next thing is what beliefs about the world so beliefs what beliefs about the world would you have so now that you're this person what do you believe about the world or other people so you believe maybe money is easy to make you believe that uh, uh people can change you believe in uh energetic healing you believe in what do you believe you believe that Making money is a good thing. You believe, well, I don't know. I'm just giving you ideas of things you could believe. You believe that uh, success is easy or you believe that, what, what do you believe? So now that you have this, what would you believe? What would you believe? The world needs this. That's a good belief. Yeah, believe that people love, yeah. What I do is valuable, it's good. How would you believe the world loves it? So if you want to be a, a, a you know, a super conscious uh, coach, magnet mind coach, you would believe that the, the world, uh, the world wants this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't hope. Just believe, just choose it. Nice. So here I'll tune into mine. Okay, so I am this. I'll step into it. I am it. I am world renowned author Christopher Duncan, best selling, first development book ever released. I believe. I believe that every that education is powerful. I believe in I believe in people's ability to change. I would believe that uh, I would believe that my book is great. I'd believe in I would believe I believe that people are, are ready for a, the the next shift of awakening. I'd believe that um, yeah. What else would I believe? I believe in my, I believe in the work. I already believe in the work. I would believe, what would I believe? Hmm. I feel so centered and solid in it. So I believe, I believe what I would believe now that this is the most revolutionary way. That's what I would believe. Okay, so what's the next level? So do you see how I do it? I tune into it. I kind of listen to what's there, right? I go, that's cool. I believe this. That's what I'm going to believe. So next is what are you going to believe about yourself? identity beliefs what we believe about to yourself so i am a good writer or i am good at money i am great at this i can i will i am uh, i have yeah so what do you believe when you are this and, and so just you know what do you believe about yourself and, and this is everything that makes up an identity Yeah. So everything, everything you've written down there, this is your identity. Okay. And, and once you've got it, I want you to put a, you know, a circle around it. I want you to put a circle around it and then, and then kind of just look at it and we're going to choose to be this. 
We're going to choose to be this, to become it. We're going to choose it because we know that by becoming it, it includes our end results. Yeah? 